वेलकम टू द लाइव सेशन बाय इंफिनिटी लर्न बाय श्री चैतन्य आई एम मिस बाय योर मैथ्स एडुकेटर एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट नेचर ऑफ रूट्स ऑफ क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशंस सो इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव लर्न्ड हाउ टू सॉल्व क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशंस यूजिंग द क्वाड्रेटिक फार्मूला इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट नेचर ऑफ रूट्स ऑफ क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशंस एंड विल बी डूइंग क्वेश्चंस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देम हेलो गौरव वेलकम टू दिस सेशन are you able to hear and see me so let's wait for some more seconds let other students join as well and then we can start with this session on the infinity learn class 9 and 10 youtube channel we are going to talk about nature of roots of quadratic equations in the previous two sessions we have learned how to solve quadratic equations using the method of factorization and then the quadratic formula we have derived the quadratic formula as well Hello Albatross hello Swetha welcome to this session so nature of roots of a quadratic equation i'm good albatross i hope to meet you chalo so before actually starting with nature of roots let's do a question on the basis of quadratic formula you have to solve this quadratic equation using quadratic formula only i mean because you are doing the application of quadratic formula you can use the factorization method as well it is not hard and fast but try using the quadratic formula only hello uh, abhiti welcome to this session so try doing this quadratic equation using quadratic formula obviously x is the variable over here try doing this one guys so you know that the quadratic formula is this guys in order to solve a quadratic equation the quadratic formula is x is equal to minus b plus minus root d upon 2a correct this is the quadratic formula everybody knows this where d is the discriminant right and d is equal to what guys discriminant is equal to b square minus 4ac i'm writing abc in capital letters over here because small abc is already there so you'll get confused so let's compare the given quadratic equation with the standard form of a quadratic equation so this is the standard form of a quadratic equation So what is b over here, guys? B square minus ac, a is ab, and c is minus bc over here. So let's find the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac, capital B square minus 4 into capital A into capital C. So that will be what, guys? B square minus ac, the whole square minus 4 into a and c. So that will be ab into minus bc, right? A B into minus B C over here. So this is the discriminant, guys. Let's simplify this thing. Ah, uh, Bimla, due to some reason, otherwise class will be there daily. Don't bother. Hello, Shweta. I'm doing good. So concentrate over here, Bimla. So let's simplify. If you use A minus B, the whole square formula over here, what will I get, guys? I'll get B square the whole square minus two into B square into A C plus A square, A C, the whole square. Then this will be plus four. Ah, uh, this is plus four B square A C, right? This is four B square A C over here. I hope this is clear. Now this can be further simplified like this, guys. B square the whole square, and you see this is minus two B square A C, and then plus four B square A C. So can I say it is two into B square into A C? that will be left over here guys any doubt in this thing and then plus ac the whole square is this clear to everybody guys now you see this is of the form x square plus 2 into x into y plus y square it is of that form over here right so it is of the form x plus y the whole square so can i say this is b square plus ac the whole square guys do you agree with me i hope this is clear to everybody in this session any doubt up till here guys now we have to find the roots of this quadratic equation so basically i must write capital a and capital c because then you'll get confused minus b plus minus root d upon 2a now it is okay with you guys now that is equal to what minus b so b over here is the coefficient of x so that will be minus of b square minus ac plus minus square root of d over here and d we have got to be equal to b square plus ac the whole square you see b square plus ac the whole square right 
and in the denominator you have got 2a over here right so 2a a is the coefficient of x square so that is a b i hope it is clear up till here so let's simplify it further if i open up this bracket i'll get minus b square plus a c plus minus you see square root is there and square is also there so i will get b square plus a c only over here and in the denominator you will get 2 ab is it clear to every student up till here any doubt in that correct now let's simplify this thing we can write them uh, uh, differently so this is minus b square plus a c so let's write over here minus b square plus a c and that is plus minus b square plus a c divided by 2 a b b square plus a c divided by 2 a b right so two roots are there one time you will take the plus sign and then the other time you can take the negative sign over here so two roots are there over here guys let's simplify them one by one so b square plus a c if i take the positive sign i'll get plus b square plus b square plus a c over here right and in the denominator you will get over here 2 a b this is 2 a b so you see this will get cancelled out so you will be left with 2 a c divided by 2 a b correct so this will be cancelled out so you see one root of this quadratic equation is coming out to be equal to 2 by b one root is coming out to be equal to 2 by b over here i hope it is clear uh, let me write it properly so that it is not confusing for you so this is c by b not 2 by b that is c by b now the other root we can write over here that is minus b square plus a c and if i take the negative sign over here that will be minus b square minus a c divided by 2 a b over here so you see a c a c will get cancelled out and you will be left with minus 2 b square divided by 2 a b so you see this will be cancelled out b and b will be cancelled out so minus b by a so what can I say the two roots of that quadratic equation they are minus b by a and c by b. Any doubt to any student over here albatross, abhiti, shweta, bimla, pinky is it clear hello shubh is this clear to everybody. So we are using the quadratic formula and solving this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Is it clear guys just confirm that in the chat. Hello shubh welcome to this session. Is it clear guys just confirm now so that we can start with nature of roots of quadratic equations okay love kush okay shubh please start from the basics shweta suppose you are there in grade 8 and 9 it can happen that some basic issues are there basic mathematics so please try to cover up grade 7 things first Ah, uh -huh, yeah, most of the times it will be, it is applicable for every type of quadratic equation. But many a times if you will use the factorization method, you will be able to do it quickly. So it's not just about doing it correctly, you have to do it quickly as well. Dazzle soul, I hope you understand that. Minus b square plus ac minus b square minus ac. So Bimla, we have got that as well. You see, Bimla, we have got that as well. So two roots we have got, na? minus b square plus ac minus b square minus ac. Both of them we will get, na? two roots are possible Bimla, is it clear? Minus B square plus AC minus B square minus AC as well and minus B square plus AC plus B square plus AC as well. Both of these things are possible. That is, that is Sridhar Acharya's formula, Shubh quadratic formula, there is, I mean the other name of quadratic formula is the Sridhar Acharya's formula, we are using that only. There is nothing called Dharacharya's formula Shubh, that is Sridharacharya's formula and we are doing that only over here. I hope it is clear. Okay, so we have done this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Now we are going to talk about nature of roots of quadratic equations. So very basic concept, see there are many things in nature of roots. We are not talking about every type of thing in nature of roots. We are talking about your school syllabus that is CBSE syllabus of grade 10, right? So you see this is the standard form of a quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c x is the variable and a cannot be equal to 0 the coefficient of x square cannot be equal to 0. So we have studied the quadratic formula right now in the previous session as well 
दैट एक्स विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस बी प्लस माइनस रूट डी अपॉन टू ए करेक्ट वेर वी कॉल दिस डी एज द डिस्क्रिमिनेंट डी इज इक्वल टू बी स्क्वायर माइनस फोर ए सी एंड दिस इज नोन एज द डिस्क्रिमिनेंट नाउ वाई दिस इज नोन एज द डिस्क्रिमिनेंट so i had said in the previous session that i will tell you why we call it a discriminant uh, there is a logic a simple logic behind that that why we call this as discriminant this simple logic is because this discriminates on the basis of its value the nature of roots of a quadratic equation the value of d will decide the nature of roots of a quadratic equation therefore you call it the discriminant you can understand from here three cases are there basically the first case is suppose i take the discriminant to be equal to 0 what will happen guys tell me if discriminant will be equal to 0 you see that the roots will be like this or not minus b plus minus root 0 upon 2a correct can i say like that so therefore it will be minus b upon 2a and plus minus 0 over here correct square root of 0 is 0 only so therefore two roots are there and they are equal you see both of the roots are equal only and they are minus b upon 2a so when discriminant is equal to 0 you will say that real and equal roots are there real and equal roots are there you got this very simple logic when discriminant is equal to 0 then real and equal roots are there exactly hello prithvi raj welcome to the session so when discriminant is equal to 0 real and equal roots are there basic concept it is i hope it is clear so this is basically very important i mean many a time especially in school as well as in uh, competitive examinations as well this this condition is used that discriminant is equal to 0 for real and equal roots correct now suppose i take discriminant to be positive what will happen if i take the discriminant to be positive you see this value i am taking to be positive it can be anything so you can find the square root of positive number na that will exist square root of any positive number will exist when you talk about real numbers so can i not say two real roots are there one will be minus b plus root d upon 2a and the other real root will be minus b minus root d upon 2a right two real roots will exist or not and their values will be different exactly so real and distinct roots distinct means different real and distinct roots are there when discriminant is greater than 0 then real and distinct roots are there is it clear shubh prithviraj dazzle soul any doubt in this thing when discriminant is equal to 0 then real and equal roots are there when discriminant is greater than 0 then real and distinct roots are there Dis distinct means they will have different values that's it simple logic now suppose you take this discriminant to be negative that is the third case if i take the discriminant to be negative what will happen guys if i take the discriminant to be negative if you take anything inside the square root to be negative so in the domain of real numbers you cannot find that right up till you are studying real numbers you cannot find square root of negative values you haven't studied that so you will say no real roots are there correct or not no real roots so uh, it is there in grade 11 i mean complex roots are there i mean something called iota and all that will come i'm not explaining right now over here right so complex roots are there when discriminant is less than 0 then no real roots and that those are complex roots exactly dazzle i hope this is clear something called iota and all that i'm not discussing that over here i hope you understand or maybe i will explain for some seconds that i mean at least you can get some idea about that is it clear to every student up till here shubh prithvi raj dazzle soul is it clear up till here so basically complex numbers are there you will study about them in detail in grade 11 but at least i can give a simple idea of that basically square root of minus 1 that is represented by i this is called iota square root of minus 1 is represented by i that is called iota so for example uh, i hope you understand that 
so for example inside this square root suppose discriminant is coming out to be minus 8 correct suppose discriminant is coming out to be minus 8 so you have to put inside this square root minus 8 so what will you do you can write it like this right you can understand it like this so this will be basically root 8 i now whatever is this thing you know that this will be 2 root 2 i correct so there are, there is the whole thing the complex geometry and all that so i'm not going into that hello meena welcome to this session is it clear to every student up till here any doubt in that so you see if square root of i uh, minus 1 is i so you can say that i square is minus 1 correct i square is minus 1 if you can square on both these sides of this thing so i square can be represented as minus 1 i hope this is clear up till here guys i'm not going into that there is there are properties of iota and all that right because we are restricting uh, our knowledge up till this thing the nature of roots of quadratic equations i hope this is clear to every student over here okay now let's do some questions on the basis of these concepts can you try doing this one find the value of k if this quadratic equation has equal roots try doing this one guys find the value of k for which this quadratic equation will have equal roots try this guys Are you talking about your board exam? So we are majorly focusing on that only positive to all. Okay, so for equal roots, what is the condition guys? Every time when you get this question for equal roots, the condition is discriminant is equal to 0. And discriminant is what? B square minus 4ac. So the condition is b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. But for that you have to write the equation in the standard form first, right? So open up the bracket. This is kx square minus 2kx plus 6 is equal to 0. This is the standard form of the quadratic equation where a is equal to k, the coefficient of x square, b is equal to minus 2k, the coefficient of x and c is the constant that is 6. So b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 will be there. So b square will be minus 2k the whole square minus 4a is what the coefficient of x minus 4ac. C is the constant term that is 6 and that is coming out to be equal to 0 right. Now you can further simplify this will be 4k square minus 6 4s are 24k that is equal to 0. So from here we can take 4k as common. So k minus 4 6 are 24 that is equal to 0. So basically this is a quadratic equation in k, right? Oh yeah, let's see that Shubh. So this is a quadratic equation in k. So you will say that two possible values of k are possible. k is equal to 6 or k is equal to 0. Two possible values of k they are possible from here. But basically you cannot take both the values over here because if you take k is equal to 0, the coefficient of x square will become equal to 0, right? And you know that in a quadratic equation, the coefficient of x square cannot be equal to 0. Otherwise, it will cease to be a quadratic equation. Exactly a dazzle soul. So therefore, k is equal to 0, we will neglect. And k is equal to 6 is the answer. That's correct, Shubh. I hope it is clear to every student watching this. Any doubt in this question, guys? Is it clear? Dazzle soul positive to all. Shubh. Okay. So let's move on to the next question, guys. Let's try doing this one. So it is this. Okay. This is different. Try doing this one. For what value of k? This is a perfect square. So basically, there is a, you can say, grammatical mistake over here. Because equation cannot be a perfect square, right? So basically, uh, this must not be there. I hope you understand that. This must not be there, right? Find the value of k for which this polynomial is a perfect square. You can say like that. For which this polynomial is a perfect square. Now this question is also perfect. Got it or not? Yeah. Although the concept will be same, the concept which will be used is same, but you cannot say that a quadratic equation is a perfect square. A polynomial can be a perfect square. Na? An equation cannot be a perfect square. 
or you can say that the left hand side or the right hand side can be a perfect square but an equation as a whole uh, that does not make any sense i hope it is clear okay but although the concept will be same only the concept will be used which is used will be same only so if you think that this polynomial is a perfect square and this is a polynomial in variable x okay variable x is there so if a quadratic polynomial is a perfect square what does it mean <laughs> that that quadratic polynomial is like this or not tell me that the quadratic polynomial can be written like this or not guys do you agree with that it means that the quadratic polynomial can be written like this so if you talk about the zeros of this quadratic polynomial it will have two equal zeros or not tell me so if a quadratic polynomial can be written as a perfect square it means that it will have two equal zeros do you agree with that and if i take this quadratic polynomial as a quadratic equation then the same thing will be there for this quadratic polynomial you say equal zeros and for this quadratic equation you say two equal roots that is the same thing or not guys do you agree with me so it means you have to use the same condition of equal roots that's it you just have to use discriminant is equal to zero same thing will be used and that is equal to what b square minus 4ac that is equal to 0 and what is b over here b is the coefficient of x so 2k plus 4 is b so 2k plus 4 the whole square minus 4a is what 4 minus k and what is c over here c is 8k plus 1 and that is equal to 0 correct that is equal to 0 over here i hope it is clear I don't remember the answer Shub. let's check if it is correct or not I hope you understand that so before actually simplifying can I not take 2 as common over here see out of 2k plus 4 I can take 2 as common guys so it will be left we are be, uh, left with uh, this thing and if I square this whole thing what will we get guys we'll get 4 into k plus 2 the whole square correct minus 4 into can I open up this bracket guys this bracket I can open so this will give you uh, 32k plus 4 minus 8k square minus k and that is equal to 0. Just check it once again 32 4 minus 8k square minus k that is correct only up till here right. Now instead of multiplying 4 why will you multiply 4 guys take 4 as common na? no need of multiplying that otherwise it will make it complex unnecessarily. Now let's simplify k plus 2 the whole square it will be k square plus 2 twos are 4 k plus 4 over here and you see this is minus over here so you'll get minus 32 k and then uh, basically uh, okay minus 32 k and you are getting minus 4 over here plus 8 k square uh, give me some seconds give me some seconds guys uh, minus 32k minus 4 plus 8k square plus k right correct plus k that is equal to 0 so basically 4 will vanish guys because it will divide on the other side of the equation so it will become 0 only so let's simplify this thing so what are we getting after simplification guys you see over here plus 4 and minus 4 will get cancelled out and this is basically 8k square plus k, k square that is 9k square over here so 9k square and then you have got over here uh, 5 minus, 20, uh, minus 32 right so you'll get minus 27 minus 27k that is equal to 0 so i can take 9k as common over here so k minus 3 we will be left with i hope this is clear up till here any doubt to any student so again see two values of k they are possible because this is a quadratic equation in k so k can be 0 or 3 now you have to check whether this is uh, you have to just put k is equal to 0 and k is equal to 3 in the coefficient of x square. So if you put in 4 minus k, if you put k is equal to 0, then also it is not becoming 0. You can also put k is equal to 3, then also it is not becoming 0. It means both the values are safe. So therefore k is equal to 0 and k is equal to 3, they are correct. Very good, Shubh. Is it clear to every student in this session? Dazzle soul, Shubh, is it clear? Any doubt in this question, guys? Tell me. 
it's a simple i mean a bit of calculation is there but the question is not very complex uh, if you talk with respect to concept i hope this is clear okay can you try doing this one guys can you try doing this one find the positive value of k for which this quadratic equation and the other quadratic equation both will have real roots can you tell that guys both must have real roots over here find the positive value of k for which both will have real roots over here try doing this one and let me know the value of k positive value of k is being asked hello nikleshwar welcome to the session try doing this one guys so basically for real roots what is the condition c if discriminant is greater than 0 then real and unequal roots are there and if discriminant is equal to 0 then real and equal roots are there but over here both the conditions are combined have real roots so if only real roots are given you have to take both the conditions now equal roots and unequal roots both you have to take right so when only real roots is given you have to take discriminant is greater than equal to 0 correct you have to take this condition for both of the quadratic equations you have to take this discriminant is greater than or equal to 0 so for the first quadratic equation if i'm using suppose i'm writing d1 for the first quadratic equation that is greater than or equal to 0 so it will be b square minus 4ac greater than or equal to 0 right so what is b square k square minus 4ac minus 4a is what the coefficient of x square and c is what over here c is 64 that is greater than equal to 0 over here i hope it is clear now you can further simplify can i write it k square minus you see this is 8 square guys and this is uh, 2 square so can i not say 8 twos are 16 square is greater than equal to 0 can i talk like this guys in the same manner for the second quadratic equation also real roots are there so d d2 is also greater than equal to 0 so for the second quadratic equation again we have to take discriminant is greater than or equal to 0 again b square minus 4ac so minus 8 square that is b over here minus 4a is the coefficient of x square and c is the constant term k that is equal to that is greater than or equal to 0 over here right so this is basically 8 8s are 64 minus 4k that is greater than or equal to 0 i hope it is clear okay let's see that shub now basically see obviously if you are talking about both the quadratic equations it means you have to take the common value or not guys you got that logic you have to take the common value so therefore i am not solving the inequality because i haven't explained that as well so no point of discussing the inequality can i not say if i take only the equal equality over here only the if i consider the equation over here so I'll get k is equal to 16. I'm just talking about the positive value, correct? I'm just talking about the positive value. In the same manner over here as well, if I just take the equation, I'm ignoring the inequality, I'll get k is equal to 16 again. Anyways, we will take the common value or not, tell me. We don't need to solve the inequality. So we'll have to take the common value only. So I will say that k is equal to 16 is the answer. There is no point of solving this inequality and solving this inequality because anyways you want to get the common value. I hope it is clear. And one more thing, this is greater than and this will be basically less than thing. So anyways only equality will be common. I hope it is clear to you. Any doubt in that Shubh Nikleshwar, Dazzle Soul? I hope it is clear to every student in this session. Okay. Now let's see this question. Although you don't have to solve anything in this question, I have to prove it. If the roots of this quadratic equation are equal, then we have to prove that 2b is equal to a plus c. Was it not clear, Shubh, the previous question? 
so roots are equal over here so we have to prove 2b is equal to a plus c so again the same thing if roots are equal what we can say discriminant is equal to 0 so discriminant is what b square minus 4ac i'm using capital b over here because small a b c are already given in the question so b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 so what is b square over here this is the uh, coefficient of x that is b guys so c minus a the whole square minus 4 a c a is the coefficient of x square so b minus c over here and what is the constant term c is the constant term so a minus b that is equal to 0 this is the condition we have to simplify okay Shubh. okay let's see that nikleshwar so let's simplify this thing let's open up this bracket i can use identity over here so this will give us c square minus 2ac plus a square over here correct now i can open up this bracket what will i get tell me minus 4ab minus 4ab minus b square so that will be plus 4b square and then you will get minus ac so that will be plus 4ac over here and then you will get uh, plus bc so minus 4bc over here i hope you got this thing it's as simple as that so basically we just have to use identity that's it nothing more is being used over here so you see ac ac ab bc okay so let's simplify it properly so basically i can write it like this a square plus 4b square plus c square over here and then minus 4ab over here minus 4ab over here now you see 4 uh, minus 4bc is already there minus 4bc and you see over here plus 4ac minus 2ac so i can write plus 2ac over here correct and that is equal to 0 is this clear to every student now what we have to do basically this expression can be fixed in the form of identity right you have studied x plus y plus z the whole square identity right x plus y plus z the whole square what is that equal to x square plus y square plus z square plus 2xy 2yz 2zx that will come over here or not tell me so basically you have to fix in that form only and you will get the answer right so basically over here you see that the product of the uh, first and the second is negative product of the first and second terms that is negative second and third is also negative but first and third that is positive product of first and third is positive so what can i say over here can i not take the middle middle one to be negative guys can i take the middle one to be negative no that identity is not used over here nikleshwar we are using this identity nikleshwar if you have got something like this x plus y plus z the whole square so basically that is equal to x square plus y square plus z square plus 2xy 2yz 2zx xy it is there in grade 9 2yz 2zx so this identity we are using nikleshwar correct you just have to fix in that form over here correct so basically you see the last uh, the middle one over here i'm writing over here only otherwise it will be confusing so a square plus can i write 4b square like this minus 2b the whole square plus c square tell me i can make it like that i'm fixing in that identity now this is nothing but 2 into a into minus 2b over here can i say in the second manner in the same manner you see this will be written as 2 into minus 2b into c over here in the same manner the last one is 2 into a into c and that is equal to 0 have i got that guys so basically you see this is of the form x square plus y square plus z square 2 x y 2 y z 2 x z it is of that form right so if you further simplify this thing can i not say that this whole thing is nothing but a minus 2b a minus 2b plus c the whole square have i got this thing guys a minus 2b plus c the whole square have we got that shubh nikleshwar is it clear so a minus 2b the whole square you see 
Now the square of something is coming out to be equal to 0. So if the square of something is coming out to be equal to 0, then there is no other possibility but to say that the thing inside the square is itself equal to 0. There is no other possibility. So we have to say that a minus 2b plus c is equal to 0 or we can say over here that 2b is equal to a plus c. Have we proved that guys? Tell me. Have we proved it? 2b is equal to a plus c. Is this clear to every student watching this? Just confirm that guys quickly. Okay, Aditya, no, it's not like that. That is not true. Okay, I hope it is clear. Chal. Okay, now you see one more question of this form which is uh, basically famous. So you see over here this quadratic equation in x, x is the variable over here. It is having equal roots. So we have to prove this thing. We have to prove that c square is equal to a square into 1 plus m square if this quadratic equation is having equal roots. I hope it is clear. So you see the same concept will be used, right? Same concept will be used. It, it will have equal roots and I'm, I'm not giving you time because this is a proof based question. Anyways, you cannot do anything in the chart, right? So uh, again, the same thing for equal roots, discriminant is equal to zero. So what can I say? I'm writing again capital ABC so that it is not confusing. B square minus 4AC is equal to zero. So what is B over here? The coefficient of X. So basically, 2m and c x, 2, uh, 2m and c the whole square minus 4a. What is a? a is the coefficient of x square. This is a. So 1 plus m square into n square. This is a, right? And what is c over here? c is the constant term. This is c. So c square minus a square, right? And that is equal to 0. If you simplify this, you'll automatically get the answer. I hope it is clear. Exactly. Same concept will be used. Nikleshwar over here, no formula is used as such. Everything will get cancelled out. I, uh, I think no uh, algebraic formula is used. Only simplification. Let's do that Nikleshwar. So you see this is what? 4m square n square c square, right? But yeah, you have to be patient while simplifying these things. I'm also patient. Otherwise, you may miss any variable. Suppose you will miss n. Then you will see, oh my god, where it has gone. So it will be confusing. So have patience, you'll do that. It's not very tough. Okay, so this is what if I multiply, you see, I have to multiply. I have to multiply this plus uh, n square c square. So it will give us 4 n square c square, right? And then if I take, okay, I guess, see, that's what happening. That's what is, that's what it is happening because three terms are there now. So therefore, I'm also getting confused. Okay, no problem. So first, these three I have used, right? Then what I will use? Then I will use this one, this one, and this one, right? So I will again get plus, I will again get plus 4 n square a square, right? Yes, I'll get this one over here. Now what I will get? I'll get minus 4 m square n square c square, correct? Minus 4 m square n square c square. You see, I've got this thing, right? Now what I will get? Minus 4 m square n square a square. So it will be plus, not minus this time. So plus 4 m square n square a square. I'm just multiplying what I'm doing. Nothing else. Is it clear? Up till here, is it clear? Uh, we don't need to use that Nikleshwar. You see, it will be cancelled out. 4 m square m square c square. 4m square n square c square. It got cancelled out or not, Nikleshwar? Tell me. So I hope this thing is clear up till here. Now basically over here, Nikleshwar, can I not take minus 4n square as common? Tell me. Minus 4n square as common I can take over here. So I can say that c square minus a square, c square minus a square, and minus m square a square will be left. You see, this will be left over here or not? Tell me, Nikleshwar. I hope it is clear. Now, you see, two possibilities are there. This can be equal to 0 or this can be equal to 0. Correct? But you see, this cannot be equal to 0 because if you will take 
if you will take minus 4 n square to be equal to 0, what does it mean? It means that n will be equal to 0. And if n is equal to 0, if you take n is equal to 0, the coefficient of x square will become equal to 0. If you take n is equal to 0, then coefficient of x square will be equal to 0. So therefore, this cannot be equal to 0. This you have to neglect. So the only possibility is this thing must be equal to 0. That is c square minus a square minus m square a square must be equal to 0. Correct? Over here. So what you can take? You can take these things on the other side of the equation. It is just simplification. So c square is a square plus m square a square over here. Now what I can do? I can take a square as common. So I will be left with 1 plus m square. So have I proved guys that c square is equal to a square into 1 plus m square? Tell me. Hello motivation. Is it clear Shubh Nikleshwar? Is this clear to everybody else? Hello motivation. Is it clear? To every student watching this, I hope it is clear to every student watching this thing, right? Okay, so that's all we needed to discuss in this session on nature of roots of quadratic equations on the Infinity Learn class 9 and 10 YouTube channel. In the subsequent session, we'll be doing word problems on quadratic equations. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Infinity Learn class 9 and 10 YouTube channel. And also don't forget to subscribe to the Telegram channel as well so that you don't miss any updates regarding sessions and also these PDFs which we are taking in sessions. Bye bye guys. Take care everybody.